I like this rack uh, because I think a lot of the routes I took are real natural, and that's what you're trying to look for is minimal cue ball movement, and that means letting the cue ball go where it goes naturally. On that shot, I had a very low break ball, and you could tell that was a draw stroke. The cue ball actually curved to this bottom rail. Um, something else I'll point out that interesting that I'm, I'm looking at lately in, uh, shots, in break shots like this, take a look at... Take a look at the six, or, or these, these two balls right here. Because the energy from the break shot's going into the rack here. You're going to see these two balls both go to the rail, and then all the way back to the rack. The question is, could I have achieved the same result with a softer shot? Maybe the cue ball would have only drawn over here a little bit. But then there would have been more balls open. So watch those two balls uh, go to the left side rail on this break shot. See, and then they both come right back and create a big cluster in the center of the table. So uh, this is a really complicated subject, and it's something I want to dive into more in the future. Um, exactly what happens with those break balls, I think uh, they're predictable. And so I think there can be a more intelligent solution to how to break, hit break shots than simply follow with uh, inside angles and draw with outside angles. And even looking at where you're hitting the rack ball, I think there can be, maybe there, there can be more prediction done to what's happening to help you determine the speed of the break shot. Anyway, not a bad result, even given all that. I've got a shot on this eight ball, and the cue ball naturally is going this way. So, you know, this is a hit em and hope. And I and I'm, didn't use follow on that. I, it's going to pick up a lot of spin. Look at that ball spin, no matter what you do. But I didn't use follow. I feel like it's going to carry them off some balls and scratch. I wanted the cue ball to kind of slow down and stop because I know those balls are going to open up and spread. And that's what happened. Pretty good result. That's a, a pretty good result for a re-break shot. You're, you don't always have the most control on a re-break shot. But this is fantastic. I don't have a good break ball. I've got two, two sets of balls that are close and tied up that I need to deal with. And so on, right now I have three shots. <clears throat> I could shoot this ball on the corner of the side, but I don't like that at all. I, no, no reason to shoot that. If you shoot the two, your cue ball's running into these balls or something weird's happening, and I need to deal with this. So, again, what's the natural route? If I shoot this, this one ball, it's naturally going to hit this rail and go this way. Now, if I, I'm going to hit this soft. That's the right shot. I'm going to hit this soft because I might hit this four. And that'd be great, because that'll probably knock the four over here a little bit, as long as I hit it real soft. And then I've got an insurance ball on the nine, so that's great. But I'm actually trying to miss that four ball. Because if I miss the four ball, then the cue ball uh, should come up and tap that five, separate these, and that five should become a break ball. And uh, that's what I get. So, there's no control being exerted over the cue ball there. You're, you're just rolling in and, and uh, you know, uh, adjusting for the the amount of hit that you're how much you're cutting this ball to uh, control the angle off the rail and that's pretty much it and so that's natural position and natural position on this next shot I'm, I, I'm I've, I took a, a little bit of a look there both of these balls go in this pocket so I really want my cue ball over here to shoot those balls next I, I need to deal with these two but this 13 is a blocker ball for the 15 in this pocket. And, I, and the 5 ball blocks me from getting position on the 15 over in this pocket. So I hope you're following along with my spaghetti there. So what I'm, what I'm doing, what I just took a quick look, and what I'm doing is 4 ball to the 13 to this ball to this ball. Kind of climbing down the ladder. But that clears, clears those balls. Everything's in the wide open except for these two. So that's the extent of the plan here. And that's a natural position. Look at that. How hard is it to control the cue ball to do this? Not hard at all. It's a natural route. Then this is just a stop shot. I think I should have considered here. I don't think it would have been a huge mistake if I thought it was clear to shoot this ball and draw the cue ball up into the three. But I think that's too risky. You can hit the 15. You can hit your break ball. It's not necessary. So this is almost a stop shot. Just make this 13. 
Oh, I'm coming out for the four first. That makes a lot of sense. I, I, I forgot to include my, that ball in my, in my pattern, my, uh, uh, my ladder down pattern. But anyway, so it went from this ball to this ball to the four, and then this ball, and then this one. But to get from the 13 to the four, once again, natural position. Hardly any control exerted over the cue ball. It's going that way anyway. <laughs> so now there's not much thought needs to be put here. I've got an angle on this ball, so just make the ball and make sure that the uh, cue ball comes off the rail. So I've got my angle, and this is the critical shot because I didn't deal with, with opening up these balls, so I'm going to have to do it now with these three re remaining balls. That's a little bit tricky. Now, I, I'd like to shoot the 15 ball next in this corner and get an angle below the shot line over here so that I can bring the cue ball up into these, and that looks pretty safe. I'll be able to shoot the 10 ball back this way or this stripe ball on the side if I don't get a shot on one of those balls. So that's my plan. It's a little bit tricky because the 10 ball is where I'd like my cue ball, oh, kind of close to where I want my cue, cue ball to be. So I'm bringing the, the cue ball two rails this way. If I come too far, I could end up behind the 10 with no shot on the 15. Now, I'm okay with trying it because I will have a shot on this ball. So hopefully I'll be able to work something if that happens. But remember, I'm playing to get short of the shot line. So I think I'm going to land below the 15, and then I'll be able to go up into these balls. That's the plan. Let's see how it works out. And so this, isn't, this is probably the least natural uh, positional route, but it's still not that far from natural. Now I take a look at that 15 ball real quick, and I, I must be too thin on that 15 to bump, bump the, the two solids in the center of the table. So I'm going for a shot. This one's going to be the farthest distance that my cue ball is going to travel. Now I'm shooting that stripe ball. Can you tell what I'm doing? It's a natural positional route. And no, I'm not shooting it in the corner to draw back. That's a, a more missable shot and more difficult route. I'm actually playing a natural route for position on a three ball, two rails out of the top right corner. And it's a natural route. It's very controllable and predictable. And maybe it looks a little bit wild, but um, you know, you're coming off of this rail. If I come off this rail and land here, um, I've, I'm going to have a shot on the 15, possibly the three as well. If the cue ball stops up here, I'll have a shot on the three ball and I'll be able to just come over here and then shoot the six ball next. I mean, there's lots of good things that can happen, but it's really natural, look, to play off this rail straight at the shot line for the three into the corner pocket. And for that reason, that's the reason why I cho chose it. So now I'm not having to bump the balls open. I, I can just play a controlled shot on the three to get on the next balls. This could, could go a few different ways, and I look at it a little bit. My, I can tell that my cue ball is going to hit the six. So I'm going to let it, let it hit the six, and I'm just kind of stun it, you know, stun or softly rolling forward. Because I'll have the 15 next, or the six, or the 10. Uh, any one of those balls could have been pocketed next, depending on where the cue ball stopped. Now, uh, I, I don't have a good angle on the six or the 10, so I'm walking around taking a look. I do have a great angle on the 15, and the reason why I like playing the 15, once again, natural angle, because both of these balls go in this side pocket. So I just I have a position zone over here, and when I shoot the 15, the cue ball's going over there anyway. That's the natural route. So very, when, when, you, when, when you're not trying to change the cue ball off from its natural path very much, uh, you just have much higher percentage position plays. So that's why this is a good selection. Just get the cue ball off the rail. I'm going to have a shot on the 6 or the 10. Depending on where the cue ball stops, I'll decide how to, which one's the cue ball and how to get on it. Uh, as it happens, I'm almost dead straight on the 10. So I'm just getting just below the shot line or on the shot line for the 6. Natural route once again. And uh, I'm just a little bit below the shot line, which means I can stun the cue ball over naturally <laughs> for the break shot. So a lot of natural routes in that, in that uh, uh, rack. And so I thought it was an uh, interesting one to point out. We'll take a look at the break shot. I think I'll rack the balls pretty quickly here. This uh, break ball is a center break ball shot, and I'm not happy with the result. 
So I mentioned in the beginning, I'm looking at how my break shots are coming apart more often. I'm sorry, this is a high break ball. So the cue ball is going to hit the top of the three ball and go to this rail. I don't like right English on this because you're going to come back to the side pocket or up table. And I wonder if, if some really deliberate uh, left English on this break shot in, case, in this case is warranted. I, I think I just went with a, se se a center ball. And then you can see the result is okay. But once again, the energy went into this three and went this way. And balls went to the side rail and then went back again and, and made a big cluster in the center of the table again. I didn't have to end up with a shot. And I have only one shot. And it's the same as the first shot of this rack of the week. I've got to cut a ball into the side pocket and have a rebreak going right into the center of the rack. I mean, it works out. So maybe this is a high, high, high uh, percentage uh, way to go. But I, I wonder if there's a better way to break that rack. Uh, I'm going to be experimenting with it. I'll go ahead and play this shot because, uh, to see how this worked out. Once again, I'm afraid to use follow. I, I don't want the cue ball to move very far. Oh, it looks like I am using follow. Yeah, I sure did. The cue ball backed up and went forward again. Not too bad, but I've still got a lot of work to do. Anyway, hope you guys got something out of that. Um, stay tuned to my channel. I think there's going to be an announcement coming up soon, probably sometime this week, and um, be talking about straight pool in the future of this channel. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching very much. And I will see you next week on Rack of the Week. Bye.